welcome to season three of Tuesday Connect, where we take some time to connect with you as well as answer the question, what does the Bible say about certain things in our lives? My name is Kathy Matei and it is such a privilege to be back on your screens. We thank the Lord for the chance that he has given us to be able to do this. Again, we are super thrilled about the conversations that we have prepared ahead of you this season and so here's what we would like you to do just go down to the subscribe button down below and subscribe right and then tell a friend to tell a friend to do the same because we have a wonderful wonderful season lined up for you <laughs> lined up for you all right so with me today are richard bundy youth pastor mamlaka hill chapel and John Agagwa, pastor for Pathway, Mamlaka Hill Chapel. And we will be having a conversation about something that was very clear to us, that happened to almost all of us um, last year and the beginning of this year. And that's just the fact that COVID really confined us to our homes. And there was a great emergence of online church. And so we will be taking time to interrogate that and to get to see what does the Bible say about that. Um, what are the benefits there? What are some of the downfalls, if there are any? And we pray that the Lord will help us, even as we discuss this. So let me just go straight ahead and, and ask, John, you look like the kind that really enjoyed online church. <laughs> How was your experience? Um, well, I think uh, online church was um, a really good blessing. Um, and one of the ways that we can see how the church can leverage technology for the gospel. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I particularly appreciated is that it enabled us to continue, especially in the, in the ministry of uh, preaching um, and in the ministry of, of, of sang worship, right. um, so that all through that season, uh, nobody had to church hope and go to some other church that had an online platform mm. um, and therefore not be able to receive from the shepherds that God has put over their lives. Right. Um, so I think to that extent, it was a great blessing mm. that we were able to continue to engage in the ministry of the gospel, uh, albeit in a different way, yeah. but still a necessary way. Mm. Yeah? Let me tell you something that really worked for me. Mm. The convenience that <laughs> online church put across yeah. was incredible yeah. you would leave your bed mm. and in five minutes you're in church <laughs> with a cup of tea <laughs> i mean how cool is that i don't know yeah. bundi any more thoughts uh, well i also did enjoy the online church um, i think um with the youth we mm -hmm. were able to see opportunities of uh, being the light uh, in the media world uh, right. uh, could get so dark mm. sometimes mm. Uh, but just having that opportunity to show up and uh, have a say in what is uh, seen online. Uh, right. Not only the series that we engage in, but yeah, mm. uh, being able to be the light. Uh, and also, uh, we have uh, people who probably are high risk. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, they could be unwell yeah. uh, medically, mm. some are aged, and they were not able to ever come to church in a sense. Right. But now you're able to get into their living room uh, mm. at their own convenience, mm. as you would say. Right. And uh, I think also the guys who will never have thought of ever coming to church. Um, so like true. that Christian thing is not for me. Mm. So being able to browse and see, oh, Mamlaka Il Chapel is uh, online. Uh, let me see what that's about. Yeah. So it's kind of served an evangelistic aim, mm. a missional kind of approach. Mm. So I believe those are some of the things I personally enjoyed. Mm. Uh, I didn't have to always mean such guys, but they'd be, okay, okay, let's, let's check it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are a natural flow. Mm. Yeah. So. I think... That said, John, or do you have do you have anything else that you'd want to add? Well, yeah, um, I think also just um, the COVID season forced many churches, even those that didn't have an online platform mm. before, mm. Uh, to go online. Um, we were privileged at Mamlaka Hill Chapel to have already been online uh, mm -hmm. before. Just had to strengthen and tighten tighten a few things here yeah. and there. Yeah. Uh, but I think that was a good reminder to all of us, visually speaking, that the church is essentially a spiritual body mm. um, that we mm. are not the building we gather in. Right. In fact, mm. I remember just when COVID started, uh, it was a slogan that was really repeated in several places mm. that, yeah, the buildings may be shut down, but the church is not. Mm. Um, and that, that was a reminder that, yes, that we are meeting in different places, from different places in our homes, 
Um, but fundamentally that reminded us that the church are the people yeah. uh, and not the buildings we gather in. So I think that was the one of the advantages of having church online because it was a reminder, a visual representation of a deeper truth of what the church really is. Mm. Yeah. I think that said, there are quite a number of things that we missed. I know there, there are quite a number of things that I missed um, from just gathering together. You know how, how we do church? We come, we sing together, we pray together, we hear the Bible and, and what, what the pastor will say. You know, then we, we finish service and go take tea and there's fellowship over there and we go home. I think there are quite a number of things that I missed. Um, while, while at home and, and it wasn't possible for us to gather together here. I think one of those things is just the whole aspect of our communion. Yeah. You know, that yeah. we would sit and that we would take some time together as a body of believers to remember what it is that the Lord Jesus did and that sacrifice and that mm. would really refresh us as a body. And I know that there are actually ordinances, other ordinances that were not able to to be done just because of the fact that that people are not allowed to gather things like baptism. Yeah. I don't know how how one would do baptism yeah, in an uh, online church. You have a bathtub in your home. Please go to the bathtub. Certified. Uh, dunk, dunk, dunk. Uh, <laughs> have a white That's how you dunk you. If you are alone, just jump in and jump out as you repeat these things. <laughs> oh my goodness, John, what did you miss about about the gather church? Um, I think for me it. it really exemplified or brought to the forefront the difference between communication and fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, over time, uh, in as much as there was a bit of an excitement as we moved on to the online platform, mm -hmm. uh, attending church at home, on screen, mm -hmm. um, especially the first two or three Sundays, it, it felt like we're not losing too much. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but then over time, I started to, to feel that, yes, I'm able to communicate um, something, either the preaching or the sang worship, we are communicating, but not really quite fellowshipping. Yeah, um, same. Because fellowship involves doing life together. Mm. Um, and there, 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 there are just certain aspects of doing life together that are impossible online. And so I started to miss that quite a bit. I started to yeah. miss the handshake after church. I started to miss the, the conversation. The handshake after church. <laughs> that's, that's right? The, the conversations um, after, the, after the services, right. the mm. tea that you take with people, find out yeah. how they've been during the week, the yeah. warm hug that mm. you give each other, uh, praying mm. together in, oh, the yeah. prayer, in the prayer room after the service because of the difficulties that people might have been going through. Yeah. All those things were impossible and mm. it started to grow on me at the time that yeah, I think at some point I was beginning to confuse communication for fellowship. Mm. Um, but as time went by, I realized, oh yeah, we are communicating, but I'm really missing the fellowship. Right, mm. right. Yeah. Any thoughts, Bundy? Well, you could participate, but then there is uh, the aspect of active participation. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I play FIFA a lot. Uh -huh. It's one thing to play Liverpool versus Chelsea on, uh, on a PS. It's one uh, and, win? Thing. and win? And win. And <laughs> win. <laughs> just, just, just stick with participating, just right. participate. Okay. It's another thing to actually attend the match, right. uh, to be amongst the players, to be amongst the fans, seeing the roars of the mm. crowds and the emotions mm. involved. Mm. So I think th there's a sense in which we felt we participated. Right. But the active involvement in our ministries, uh, mm. weren't able to do our missions, uh, engagement, uh, weren't able to do um, uh, active involvement like uh, the children's ministry. Yeah. It's just been nice seeing the marshals coming back, yeah. engaging with the kids. Mm. Um, all our volunteers, most of them were, um, could say, incapacitated in a sense, but seeing that active participation right. uh, was a big thing for me. I really missed it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So. I, and I think that's just part of it. Um, moving to the online platform, just as Bundy has mentioned. Mm. Um, it minimizes, um, I think it's somewhere in Ephesians, mm. uh, where Paul talks about how Christ Jesus has given to each and every member mm. of his body gifts. Yeah. Um, and why he gives us gifts is so that we can exercise them in service to one another. Mm. That's true. Um, and the thing with the online platform is that many of those gifts are 
it's either impossible or very difficult to mm. practice them online. That's true. Um, so it minimizes the number of people that can actively engage the giftings of God that mm. God has put um, uh, in their lives. And so, for example, like what the Bundi has, made, has mentioned, those people who are gifted in teaching children, mm. they just couldn't exercise that gift for almost a year because they are not able to come to church. Um, mm -hmm. And so maybe they, it's limited in its use. Uh, mm -hmm. You could probably record something online, and, and but you see only very, just Baraka would do that. Yeah, um, yeah. So all these mass of Sunday school teachers are in a place where they're not actually able to engage as they mm -hmm. would have. Sure. Um, same thing with people whose gift is, uh, you know, encouraging one another, hospitality. Mm -hmm. You're not able to invite each other to your homes. Yeah. Um, oh, ATC, ATC. Yeah. So that's one. I think that's the, it, just to make a point, of, uh, to, to emphasize that point of participation, the online ministry, it, it curtails who can actually mm -hmm. exercise their gifting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably the preaching ministry, uh, the media team's uh, giftings. Mm -hmm. yeah the maybe one or two teachers and then the mm -hmm. song worship and that's pretty much that's it. it so there's no yeah. place for the ushers there's no place for uh, the sunday school teachers yeah. there's no or very little limited spaces i mean ushering online <laughs> is uh is, is quite something welcome guys um but but it's it, like it's not the same yeah. Uh, we can't see your <laughs> smile. You have to put an emoji. Yeah. Uh, and nowadays we know how how guilty we are of this. Like you can be putting the laughing emoji. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I know. Yeah, so I know. <laughs> may yeah. not always be an actual representation of what's happening. Mm. Oh, yeah. And mm. also there's the aspect of discipleship. Um, mm. I, I tried imagining Jesus and the 12 disciples and they were online. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, so guys, uh, yeah, Kapanam's doing good today. Um, wow. <laughs> and it's not like really there to reinforce the things yeah. that he's been doing. Judas left. <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> and they was like, what? It's like, uh, Judas oh, left. Oh, my this goodness. Is, yeah, it should be Judas and Peter left. Then Peter <laughs> re-added. Oh, yeah, added, 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 added again. Added added again. Added 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 again. Added <laughs> yeah, so the aspect of discipleship is a big thing. Mm. Um, yeah. We need mm. the church mm. uh, in that sense. Uh, we can't do it online forever. Mm. Yeah. I mean, but we have to admit that there was a time that that was a necessity. Yeah. That um, because of the COVID restrictions from the government, mm. then it was not possible for that to happen. However, things have changed quite a bit and to, to a good degree as we speak right now. The government has eased their restrictions, you know, and so many more people are allowed to, to come back to church. And, and actually, quite a number of people have gone back to church, but... Isn't it interesting to note in either? They are Latin translation. You know, there's a tribe in South Africa that speaks like that. <laughs> so you might want to trace your lineage, yeah, maybe. No, 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 I was online, so, so maybe that's why I liked that. I don't know, but I mean, it's it's interesting to see that even with that leeway being open for people to come back to church that things haven't gone back to normal. You know, mm. things haven't gone back to before COVID, just church-wise. And I'm curious to find out, Bundi, what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, I could say it could be a legitimate case. Mm. Someone could genuinely not make it to come to church. They, they still exist in the high-risk uh, category that I mentioned earlier. Mm. Um, that being around people, puts them at a higher risk of contracting the disease. Yeah. And so it would be wise for them to stay on home. Right. Um, so you could want to say, where are the guys? Where are the guys? But the guys who are genuinely unable to show up, mm. uh, our aged uh, parents and grandparents, yeah. um, and the list goes on and on and on. Our little kids, mm. um, we still have those fears. What will happen? We love church. We want to be with people, but there are legitimate reasons at times that will still prevent people from uh, coming to church. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Your thoughts, John? Um, I think I really want to first agree with Bundi um, that, I mean, even if everyone wanted to come back to church, mm -hmm. um, even our congregation here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel, I don't know that that would be possible. Uh, we don't have enough space to gather everyone yeah. uh, in light of the COVID restrictions. So we even know that, I mean, the truth is we are still not yet out of the woods. Yeah. There are many legitimate reasons why... Uh, people might not be able um, to gather uh, even as much as they would desire to gather. 
Uh, but I think there is uh, perhaps a group of people that is worth addressing. Mm -hmm. Those of us upon whom the convenience of church online has, you know, creeped up on us uh, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it is undeniable. Just um, when you think about it, I, I don't have to dress up, uh, can attend church in pajamas, yeah. don't have to come, you know, get annoyed with the ushers. Yeah. Um, or the parking. <laughs> or the parking and mm -hmm. how that can be a nightmare mm -hmm. sometimes. You know, and I would know um, <laughs> just how, how a nightmare <laughs> that, that would be. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so there's, there's all these inconveniences that sometimes are attached. Waking up mm. early, preparing the kids, mm. Um, and so there could be some of us upon whom that uh, sense of, um, yeah, it's actually better online, is creeping up on. Yeah. Um, and I think it behooves us to, to bring what I believe is God's counsel on this particular issue from the book of Hebrews 10, mm -hmm. uh, 24 to 25. And uh, Pastor Ted preached a bit powerfully on it a couple of weeks back. Mm. Um, and the apostle urges us and he says, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren as the former, as the manner of some is. And right. you'd argue that the stakes were a lot higher during that time. Their mm. properties were being confiscated. They were being hunted for being Christians or right. being killed and persecuted. Mm. And actually staying at home would have been the, you know, the, it would have been the quote unquote safe Thing to do at the mm -hmm. time, right. um, but because it was persecution, mm -hmm. uh, obviously you deal with that differently from what we're dealing with now. Uh, the apostle said, no, don't forsake the gathering of brethren, because there are some things that God has intended that they will function within the gathered body, mm -hmm. uh, and however great technology becomes, they will not be able to accommodate some of those things. Um, and you'd see this quite a bit, especially in the, in the, in the letters of the apostles. Mm -hmm. When John writes to the church, he says, you know, I, they have much to say to you, but I don't want to say to you through ink and pen. Mm. Uh, Paul writes to the Roman congregation and says, I long so much to see you so that there could yeah. be a mutual impartation. Mm. Um, they, they, they were not okay with being apart from each other. Right. Mm. They longed to see one another and they knew that would carry its own inconveniences. Mm. But they were willing to embrace that inconvenience so that they would obey and honor God in that. And so my prayer and my desire is that um, even as we begin to see what this space is going to look like, and we know that right now, obviously not everybody can come. People have many legitimate reasons why they would want to stay away. Some are, like Bundy said, a bit high risk. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, some lost their jobs and maybe this space, there's quite a bit that's happening. Um, and so it's, it's not as straightforward as it might have been like, and I wouldn't want us to come across as being insensitive to some of those legitimate concerns. Yeah. Uh, but I think we should rightly push back on the idea of, of uh, replacing, um, or rather substituting God's word for convenience and leaning in towards convenience as right. opposed to obeying and honoring what God has called us to do. Right. So yeah. just to be clear, you're saying that um, the body of believers should aim to gather, yeah. right? And they should long to gather back together. And you're saying that there are reasons from God's word that, you know, encourage us and, and command us to be able to do that. Yeah. Just to be clear, what are those reasons? Um, I think maybe I can have Bundi mention a first one or two, mm. and then I can mention uh, a couple. Yeah, I think one of those reasons is uh, God commands it. Right. Uh, just uh, picking up from uh, the portion he read, mm. uh, or rather mentioned, Hebrews 10, 24, 25, God commands it. Mm. Um, uh, at times we hear commands and we feel, hey, this is a loading over me. But um, I just look at it like, uh, let's say someone is dating or they're married. Mm -hmm. um, you're commanded to love your wife, but when you want to get her flowers, um, you get them for her because I have a chance to get her. Yeah. Flowers, uh, not more of uh, getting our flowers or going on another date. We are staying in the same house. It's more of a delight. Um, so God's commands are for mostly, our good. Mostly, mostly, mostly. <laughs> most times. Ideally, should be delight. <laughs> should be delight. Yeah. Uh, God's commands are for our good mm. and for His glory. So we get to do that. We get to come to church and worship God. We can. We get to come to church and uh, uh, sing together, pray mm. together. What a loving command our God has placed on us, which is right. not a burden. It's, right. uh, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Mm. This is a burden worth carrying. God commands it. Right. Yeah, right. yeah I agree. Um, 
this whole situation reminds me of the, um, the Israelites' captivity. Um, they had, you know, been together all the way from Genesis, really, from the days of Abraham. They had been together. Um, even when they had, they had gone into the captivity in, uh, in Egypt, mm. uh, in a sense, when things became tough and a pharaoh rose up and, you know, they were still together. They suffered, but they suffered together. Yeah. Um, and when God brought them into the promised land, he told them that if ever you stop obeying my laws um, and you turn away from the covenant, I will scatter you abroad. Um, and for the longest time, it looked like uh, something that would never happen. Yeah. Um, and so they would sin against God over and over and over and over again. Mm. And God would woo them and talk to them and try to bring them back. And they, they wouldn't until finally God made, his, made good his word. Uh, and he brought for the Babylonian empire to scatter them. And the Bible tells us just how. In fact, uh, one of the Psalms is a testament to that. He says, when we were by the rivers of Babylon, we remembered Zion and we wept. Um, they were so distraught about this has actually happened. Yeah. And remember, that, that would sadly be the last time that Israel would be together as a nation, at least the, the former Israel. They would be scattered for many, many, many years. Yeah. Um, for a long time. But here's the thing that caught my attention. Uh, when you read the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, mm. God begins to, to prophesy. God begins to tell them, okay, I know I scattered you, uh, but I'm going to bring you back. Yeah. Mm. Uh, they had been at that time in captivity for uh, just a mere, at the time that this was being prophesied, uh, they had been there for a couple of, maybe just about 100 years mm. at most. Um, and God started to work in people, maybe 150 years, God started to work in some of his chosen servants to bring them back. Um, and when you compare the, the people that were coming back and the people that were going, the comparison is alarming, uh, for lack of a better word. Because when they were going, they were destroyed. They were like, don't do this. This is bad. This is sad. But when God made it open, and then Cyrus the king gave the decree and decided, by the way, uh, under new management, we've defeated Babylon. This is Persia. Yeah. We are allowing you guys to go back to wherever you came from. Um, as long as you pay us taxes, it's good. Just go back. Over probably more than millions of Jews, mm -hmm. Nehemiah and Ezra records that only at most 50,000 Jews came back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, that's, that's interesting. Um, and the reason is very clear. Remember, they had built their homes. They had married. They had built an economy. Mm. They, they had children. They had a life. Oh. They had a life. Yeah. And going back to Jerusalem meant going to rebuild a flesh, a fresh because the place mm. had been burnt down. Yeah. Mm. It meant going to restart temple worship. It, mm. meant, it really meant going to start from scratch. Yeah. That's where Nehemiah 1 begins. He says the city is burnt down, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it meant starting from scratch. And I... I'm sure most of them thought about it and was like, why, the, why, why go through that trouble? Yeah. And God knew that asking the people to go back to Jerusalem was going to be a lot of trouble. Mm. But he still asked them. Mm. And only 50,000 were faithful. And the Israel that remains now, the reason the gospel was preserved, the reason that Jesus had an Israel to grow up in is because of those 50,000 that were faithful. Yeah. Um, and you never know what is at, at stake when you decide to go against God's word. And I feel like at some point in this season, we will have an opportunity like that. Mm -hmm. Our prayer and desire is that the church will gather again fully. And at that point, we'll decide whether we will lean into the inconvenience mm -hmm. that gathering mm -hmm. online brings, but honor God in his instruction in the word, mm -hmm. or we will stay with our newfound convenience. Yeah. And the reality that is that the Lord Jesus was not born from the Jews that remained in diaspora. Mm. He came forth from the Jews that obeyed God's word mm. because those are the ones he called my brothers and my sisters, yeah. those who hear and do my word. Right. And so my prayer and my desire is that for all of us, when the opportunity does come, we will remember the scriptures and we will remember God's word and that we will know that part of why we gather together is because it is the fortest of heaven. Mm. Uh, because as Pastor Ted preached a couple of weeks ago, uh, that God has been working towards gathering all his children 
right in the very presence of himself. And so even at the end, what we have to look forward to is a gathering. Mm. And in some small ways, our small gatherings in the earth are a foretaste okay. of that which is to come. Mm. And I think that is just something to look forward to yeah. and a reason to embrace even the inconvenience it comes with mm. so that we can participate in some way of showing the gospel to the world because of what it is that we are looking forward to. What a wonderful way to end the show. We hope that you have been encouraged, that you have been rebuked, corrected, that God has done his work in you through the things that have been said here. We hope that you will join us again next time, same time, same place for another episode of Tuesday Connect. But until then, God bless you. Bye.